everyone, and welcome back to another Absurd Heroine video. So, today we're doing something a little different. We're not going to be playing on the ladder, unfortunately. Sorry. But we are going to be playing with something fun. So, I sometimes get really tired of what I see a lot of on the meta, you know, in the meta on the ladder. And even in casual queue, you see a lot of the same old stuff all the time. Same old thing over and over and over again. Um, so, I got kind of tired of seeing a lot of the same old stuff. So, I thought... What's something that I haven't seen in like a really long time or what am I, I've got an itch for something, for something different. And for that is Jund. I haven't seen Jund in like ages. It, it hasn't been on the meta in ages and I haven't even seen it in casual queue in ages. So I thought, let's put it together a Jund deck. And um, it's actually kind of hard. I can tell why after trying for a little while and brewing a little bit, I can see why Jund isn't very popular right now because there's no real Jund synergy right now. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know what Jund is, Jund is um, red, green, and black. That's the color combination. Excuse so me. Jund colors, red, green, and black. And what I wanted to do is just to have a little bit of fun with those colors. And I'm going to show you what I kind of came up with. It's a mid-range deck because there's no kind of combo-y thing going on right now with Jund, and if you wanted to do like an aggro Jund, it doesn't really make sense because there's way better aggro in just like Rakdos, just black and red, or just green. Like there's really good mono green aggro right now, there's really good Rakdos aggro right now, and obviously there's really good mono red right now. So uh, if you wanted to make an aggro with Jund, it really didn't make sense because other decks just do it way better. And there's nothing combo-y, honestly. There's nothing combo-y with Jund specifically. Um, so we kind of put together a mid-range deck that kind of works a bit with some black stuff and some gruel stuff. And I'm going to show you what that is right now. So we have Rixmati Reveler. Rixmati Reveler uh, enters the battlefield, discard a card, then draw a card. And if she was uh, her spectacle cost was paid, instead discard your hand drawing three cards. So this is just getting us um, more of our cards, more card advantage as much as possible. And I'll kind of explain why like, uh, as we as we go along. Glow, sp Glow Spore Shaman. So Glow Spore Shaman enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, and you may put a land card from your graveyard on top of your library. So this is just feeding our graveyard, which is part of this deck, feeding our graveyard, and then mana fixing us. Vivian's Arcbow. So Vivian's Arcbow is a big part of this deck. So X and tap, discard a card, look at the top X cards of your library. You may put a creature card with a converted mana cost X or less from among them into the battlefield. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a, in a random order. So once you get up to a specific amount of land in this deck, you actually don't, and you have an arc bow out, you actually don't want to be casting any of the cards in your hand. You just want to arc bow. Excuse me. So this deck is like pretty much all creatures, except for a few planeswalkers and arc bow. Uh, and, and run them in the wild, but we'll get there. So Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. You may cast creature spells as though they had flash. And then her plus one is until next turn. Until your next turn, one target creature gains vigilance and reach. And her minus two is look at the top three cards of your library. Exile one face down. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. Um, for as long as it remains exiled, you may look at it. And if it's a creature card, you may cast it. Um, so this is just getting us more of our creatures out. Rhythm of the Wilds. Creature spells you control cannot be countered. And they have riot. So... Um, this is just a really good way of getting around control decks. It's it's pretty much necessary for control decks. Uh, Rhythm of the Wild, such a such a strong card. Then we have Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under control, draw a card. So most of our creatures have um, power of of four or greater. So she just helps us draw cards so that we can start feeding our Vivian's Arc Bow, um, and then she also helps ramp us. So untap target permanent. Then we have just some really good mid-range creatures so rekindling phoenix flying four three when rekindling phoenix dies create a zero one red elemental creature token that you sack and it turns back into a rekindling phoenix so it's basically really hard to kill unless you can kill the creature token uh ripjaw raptor enrage whenever it is dealt damage draw a card so this just helps us i mean it's a four five for four which is just really good on its own and then it helps us draw more cards so that we can feed our Vivian's Arcbow. Rakdos Firewheeler. Um, I actually really like this card. When Rakdos Firewheeler enters the battlefield, do two damage to target opponent and two damage to target creature or planeswalker. I I really like this card, and I like never see it in play. Um, it is it is powerful. It's hard to cast. Um, there are better things in the four slot, which I'm sure is a lot of the reasons why people don't really play this card, but it can surprise get rid of, like, 
get rid of um, planeswalkers, surprise, get rid of creatures, and get in for a lot of damage. It's just, it's really impressed me every single time that I've played with it. And I don't really see anybody ever play with it. So when I get the chance, like playing Jund midrange, like that's what I try to do. Play Rakdos Firewheeler. Store of Devkar and Lich. This guy is awesome. This guy's awesome. So he's a five forward trample for four. Like just that alone is like, mm, good. But then when Store of Devrick and Lich deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, return to your hand target creature or planeswalker card in your graveyard that wasn't put there this combat. So all of the stuff that we've been feeding into our graveyard with our Rix Maddie revelers, our glow spore shamans, our Vivian's arc bows, all the things that we're putting into the graveyard, we're getting back with our Store of Devrick and Lich. And her Golgari Fine Broker. So, when Golgari Fine Broker enters the battlefield, return target permanent card from your graveyard into your hand. So it's just a really good way of like getting stuff back. Then we have our board wipe, Massacre Girl. When Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until the end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So if there's a one, one on the field and a two, two on the field and a three, three on the field, or just t the toughness, the toughness part of that. Doesn't matter what their power is. Then she just like kills all of the things. So like if you're playing against another aggro deck, like White Weenie aggro, for example, or um, Mono Red, or any of those aggro decks that just have a bunch of little dudes, you can just destroy them. You can just clear their entire field. And then you put all of your stuff in the graveyard, sure. But if you have Incredi Rekindling Phoenixes out, like it survives. Like you have your store of Devrakan Lich or Golgari Finebroker, you don't really care because you can just get them all back, like, or the next cards that we have here, right? Ilarg the Raised Boar. Trample. When Ilarg the Raised Boar attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand into the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. And then when he dies, he's a god, so you can put him in the third from the top of your library instead of putting him in the graveyard. So this guy is just awesome. I mean, he's just as awesome as you think he might be. He's played a lot in a lot of, um, gruel decks right now that are on the ladder. And, um, it works with almost every single creature that we have so we have a lot of um when it comes into play effects like for example massacre girl i mean you can just massacre the girl like every turn every turn whatever you want um yeah so that's raised i mean he's just sick and he actually works really really well with this next card too god eternal ronus death touch when it enters the battlefield double power double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn and they get vigilance and then it's a god so you you can just put it into your library yeah, insane. This card is insane, and it works just stupidly well with the Raise Boar because every single turn you can just have him come into play, buff all your dudes, and then he just returns to your hand again so that you can do the same exact thing next turn. It's just really good. It's just really good. And then we have a one of Ravager Worm. Uh, Riot, when Ravager Worm enters the battlefield, choose up to one. It fights target creature you don't control and target land or destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. So this is just kind of um, our ways of getting rid of like search for his Kanta cards or whatever the heck. That kind of that kind of crap. Um, so yeah, pretty good deck. I've liked it so far. It's done pretty well. Um, obviously, it's not like a meta deck. I don't think anyway, uh, maybe with a little bit more brewing, we can get there, but I don't know. But until then, let's just get in and play a little bit of uh, some fun, have some fun times with this nice Jund deck because we don't see enough of it. We don't see enough of it. Ooh, I just realized my green screen's kind of off. I'm sorry about that. Let me, uh, let me turn up my lights because I'm not freaking white enough as it is. All right, so we've got our Arcbow, we've got our Kiora, we've got... Okay, so this is like a great hand, uh, except we don't have black. But I think that's acceptable. We can Arcbow next turn, uh, turn two. We can Arcbow turn two, Kiora turn three. Enter tapped, that's a good draw. And then we can just start getting in with some massive creatures. And seriously, oh, that was a good draw. Uh, do we want... Yeah, we'll Shaman. We don't have to Arcbow right away. Ooh, Ravager Worm. Okay. All right, let's, uh, what do we want to do here? Rootbound Crag? Do we need two black for anything? We need two black for Matska Girl. So I think we will actually put our black card on top there. And then we can Kiora, or maybe Vivian. Maybe we'll Vivian next turn. So what are we up against here? Gates? Looks like Gates. So let's get in. And shall we Vivian? Yeah. Let's Vivian. Do we want Vivian? Do we want Kiora? Kiora Vivian. So what can we do next turn? If we Kiora, 
Yeah, let's Kiora, actually, because then next turn we can put down a Blood Crypt and Rekindling Phoenix and draw a card off of Kiora for that. Alright, so they're digging. They are digging for some lands. Ah! Dang it! See, this is the bad thing about playing on um, the casual queue, is that if your opponent doesn't start drawing well or doesn't draw well, then they just concede sometimes. Which obviously doesn't make for very good videos. But that was like pretty much what we want to see with our draws. That was exactly what we want to see out of our draws. Oh, my green screen's still off. It's sometimes off, but it's sometimes not. I need like better lights or something like that. I'm still getting used to all of the materials that we need that I need in order to like make stuff really work super well. So I apologize about that. But it's better than nothing, right? It's better for that than having like just a block of me with my wall behind me. All right, so what do we got? We have Glowspore Shaman and Golgari Finebroker. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think this is fine. We'll um, put down, I guess, a Memorial to Unity because we, we can't we can't not have that tapped. And then we'll glow spore shaman. We'll pay pay one. Pay two rather for one of our shamans. We got more lands. I don't think we're gonna want to put any lands on top. Yeah, we're gonna decline. We're gonna decline all of that. We can get our Phoenix back if we want with our fine broker. So this is good. We'll stomping ground. Okay. Show. Ravager Worm, okay. So we'll enter tapped Close Core Shaman again. What did we get? Ooh, God Eternal. Ooh, Lich. Uh, do we want the land this time? No. I don't think we need land. We have plenty of land. We have plenty of land. We don't want to flood ourselves. So we'll find Broker for the Lich. And then we'll get in with a... Mother effin' lich, baby. See, we gotta land anyway. So, like, we didn't need it. Fine broker. For a lich. Bam. <laughs> oh, it actually is a mosquito. I, like, heard, like, a little buzzing sound by my ear, and I was like, oh, man, he has that buzzing sound even when he's just coming into your hand, huh? Thought it was the game but it wasn't it was actually a mosquito I, we live right next to a swamp right over there so um we get a lot of bugs we get a lot of bugs it sucks okay so this looks like a i'm not sure what this is this could be a glass deck all right so we're just gonna enter tapped for that we're going to attack with all the stuff And we're going to cast our store of Devrican Lich and hope that it survives. The next turn we can Ravager Worm something if we need to, to make sure that we get our Lich in. But honestly, we just want to get our Lich in and then do something. Oh no. Justice Strike. Okay. Arcbow. That's a good draw. That's a good draw. So I think we will cast it. And I think we will also cast Viv. To Wild give this guy strike vigilance. Strike hard. Um, I don't think that we want to attack with it though. We're just gonna keep him back. We could have to be more aggressive, and maybe if this was on the ladder, if we were like playing competitively, I might get in to be more aggressive. <laughs> but that's a personal flaw. Um, what I don't want him to do is concede. <laughs> I, want, I want to keep him here. I want to keep him here so that we can have more fun. Okay, yeah, so this definitely looks like a glass deck. Um, and that is like... Hero of, of District 1. Oh, that's a good draw, too. Goodness gracious, that's a good draw. Um, 
Do we want to see if we can draw more creatures? Or do we want to just get in? I just think we want a bark bow, honestly. So let's uh all things begin and end. Let's just arc bow. <laughs> Alright, what does this guy do? I've actually haven't really seen this guy before. Tap another target creature, sure. So you could get in if you wanted to. And it deals three damage to each opponent. So he could tap my fine broker. Die, bug. Die. Oh, he's gonna get in against Viv. Okay, sure. But we're going to pay six and drop a Ravager Worm, I guess. I don't want to drop my God Eternal. It'd be great if we got an Illarg. That would be fucking fantastic. Ah, oh, there it is. Illarg, yes. <laughs> yeah, you can attack my Viv. You want to attack my Viv? Go ahead, attack my Viv. Ah, oh, see, it feels just, it just feels so good to play something other than what everybody else is playing. Now we're getting started. So, to play something other than what, what you always have to play in order to climb the ladder. I mean, honestly, right now the meta is actually really strong. Okay, all right, fine. Fine. <laughs> I can just get him back anyway. Take that action. We can actually cast him if we want to. But, uh... Without, like, uh, what do we want? Rhythm of the Wild? If we had a Rhythm of the Wild out, that would be mm, perfect, but we don't. We do not have that. We do not. Okay. So he's got another one of those Guild Mages. We got a land. Ah, uh, we probably should have kept it. Sacrifice to the Vivian's Arc Bow. But I think we're gonna... Uh, what do we want to do here? What do we want to do here? We could just attack for a bunch if we wanted to. We could get the Illarg back if we wanted to. Yeah, I think that's kind of what we're gonna do. We're just gonna we're just gonna bide you our time here, like cause we will rat. find a masker girl. We will find a masker girl, and if we get one off of this guy, then then that's good. We have a glow spore shaman out, which which gets them to the two, which then gets them to the three. So we could wipe their board so long as our glow spore shaman survives. So it's good, and we can Vivi's arc bow for seven. We'll have to actually. Um, tuck our god eternal into the bin but I think that's acceptable I think that's acceptable depending on what we get do we have anything with reach no but we do have Rakdos fire wheelers if we wanted to but we're definitely not taking a Rakdos fire wheeler over uh oh hello is he going to attack with everything interesting so we're gonna block here we don't want our glow spore shaman to die so we're not because if we get a masker girl, then um, we don't want it to die. Do we care? No. So we're gonna block like that. Did it not give us the chance to use a Vivian's arrow, Arcbow? Sure, strike. All right, we're just gonna Arcbow here for seven. If we have a Massacre Girl, I might just do it just for fun. Just for shits. We didn't. So we'll do... But we don't really care about the Raised Boar, right? We don't really care about the Raised Boar. Wait, what do we have in our graveyard? Do we have another Raised Boar in the graveyard? No. But we do have... We do have a bunch of stuff that we could get. Maybe we just want a store of, honestly. What does he have in his hand? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, let's get Storv. What the heck? Let's get Storv. We can get our God Eternal back. Let's see if. If we had done this before blockers were declared, then we would have been able to block. But then I guess he would have just killed our Storv, so. I don't know. I think it's fine. Hopefully he doesn't have a way of killing this one. See, if, he have, if, he has, uh, if he has another justice strike, it doesn't I'll shock. She, he just wants to kill her. Just like before. All right. Um, so let's get in. He really wanted to kill Vivian. Spend a lot of resources on that. 
Next. Okay. So we're gonna want... Do we want another Ravager Worm? We could just do Vivian again. Uh, maybe we just want a Golgari Fine Broker and just bring a bunch of stuff back. Let's do that. Um, sorry, there's a bug still like flying around in here. And we'll Vivian <laughs> bring back Vivian. I mean, why not? Lost so much like, there's no reason not to. Have you ever lost a home? Have you ever lost a home? So, next turn we can Kiora and maybe get back some other stuff. Ooh, True Fire Captain. You don't see this one very often. I tried to make some jank with True Fire Captain. Because if you do True Fire Captain with, like, what is it, Star Extinction, you can win the game. It's pretty hilarious. But I never got it to work. Is he just going to attack with that one now? Doesn't have any combat tricks. I mean, he, like, um, only has one Ooh. white anyway, so. <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. You gotta do better than that, Brosef. Okay. So let's minus two her, actually. Starting massacre girl. Hello. Do we want a massacre girl at this point, though? Yeah. Yeah, actually, we do. Here's what we do. We just attack with everything. All attacks. We'll just attack with everything. And then we can just kill him. Uh, kill, kill them all. Kill them all. Get out of here, mosquito. Mosquitoes are the worst. We also have a lot of spiders here. But I have definitely grown to love spiders. And bats, for that, for that matter. Because of, uh... Because of how... How many how many mosquitoes there are around here? All right, so we just want to get another store of I think. Cause why not? To me, sure. Resolve. Oh, but our glow spore shaman died, so therefore it's not going to work. Uh, massacre girl, I mean, it's not going to work. So we'll drop our Kiora and drop our store of draw card. Rhythm of the Wilds. Excellent. Excellent draw. Alright. And turn, I think. Right. So we should not have attacked with our Glow Spore Shaman. That was my fault. My bad. My B, everybody. So we'll attack with our Deverkin Lich. He can either block with both of his dudes if he really wants to. Or I can just bring a Glow Spore Shaman back. And then mask a girl. I mean, I don't know why I would want to do that. Maybe I don't care. Get out of here, mosquito. Did I get it? No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I wonder if you can see it buzzing around my head. It's very, very annoying. Oh, he's only at one life. I didn't even notice that. I'm having too much fun here. I'm not even paying attention to how much health he has. This is another thing about playing in the um, casual queue, is that sometimes you just play against... I mean, this... It's, it's just kind of... <laughs> it's not great. Could be better. This deck could be better. We won. Good job. That was fun. That was fun. Alright, we'll see how we do with um, a couple more games. And if we do really well, maybe we'll play an event. Maybe we'll play the um, Constructed event. you typically end up seeing like more competitive decks in there but not super competitive decks i mean sometimes you do but usually the people who have like super competitive decks just play in the um on the ladder uh this isn't bad this isn't bad we'll, we'll keep this um maybe we'll drop the ravager worm to rick's maddie so enter tapped Next turn, Dragon Skull Shaman uh, Summit, Rick's Matty, Reveler, Healer's Hawk. Okay, that Rekindling Phoenix is good. So we'll drop Ravager Worm, get a Vivian. That's pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. 
Lean in Vanguard. Okay. So I think we might want to... Do we want a Vivian or do we want Cure here? I think we want a Cure because then we can Rekindling Phoenix next turn. So let's get in. No attacks. Kiora. They can attack Kiora. Well, let's um untap our Rick's Mighty Reveler. Because then if they have a third creature that they drop... Oh. Okay. Are they just going to attack her with everything? Okay. I don't think I'm going to block that. I don't think I'm going to block that. Let's, uh, let's rekindling Phoenix. Draw a card, arc bow. That's a good draw. That is a good draw. And if we get another land, then we can Illarg, which is really strong. A Splendid Angel. Okay, so this is a good deck. We're, we're playing up against a good deck, which is kind of funny. You usually don't see. Oh. But that's not going to work because of the Benelish Marshal. Okay. All right. Um, what do we want here? I mean, I guess we kind of like just want an Illarg, right? <laughs> that's kind of just what we want. Or do we want to Vivian and then Vivian's Arcbow? We could Vivian, then Vivian's Arcbow or Illarg. Which one do we want? Probably. Probably just Illarg, right? I mean, he's so strong. He's so strong. I think that is kind of what we want. Yeah. The ocean surges We're going to do it. <laughs> we are just going to do it. No attacks. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Oh my god! Seriously? Like what the? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Rhythm of the Wild. Um. Okay. <laughs> okay. We could just attack with Illarg. Do you, like we could give him vigilance and reach. Creature spells you control can't be countered. I mean I'm not sure I'm not sure what to do here. I'm not sure what's the best course of action. Uh I think maybe just dropping the arc bow or rhythm of the wilds. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Non-token creatures you control have riot. I think I think we just drop this. Let's do it. We're gonna drop that. No attacks. If he gets like, if he has some sort of a pump spell, then we're we're screwed. Really, charm strike. Okay. Like unbreakable formation. Like that one. Uh. Okay. So we're just gonna block the biggest dudes. Right. Um, so that's still a lot of damage. Is that still enough to kill us? It is. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ah, gosh. Rough. The way your mother likes it, Trebek. Ugh. We'll give it a plus one, plus one counter. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I think we're just fucked, honestly. Um, but let's have some fun anyway. <laughs> I mean... How does this guy get minus one? Okay, so everyone's got minus one, minus one. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's too bad. I mean, when you get like a deck like this, like this is a really good meta deck. White weenie, like, oh my God. And he got like a really good draw. He got like two Benelish Marshals, blah, 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 blah. Like whatever, whatever. <laughs> that's what happens when you play jank against a really good deck. Did you see that? You saw that. 
That's the bugger. I need to get him. I will get him. I'll get him. Okay. So, hmm. This is potentially not good at all. If we, I mean, we do have a Rick's Maddie, so we could drop our Masca Girl for, or our second Cura for a, in hopes of getting another land. Because if we do, if we do actually get a green, if we get a green mana source, no, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. It needs to be green. Like, too specific. Yeah, we'll keep this one. This is all right. And I think we'll keep that too, actually. So, enter tapped. We've got a Vivian on turn three. Ooh, okay. So, we're playing up against possibly mono red here. And this is a slow draw. We do not want slow draws for mono red. But, we do have a Masker Girl. We don't have a second swamp. Oh, okay. Goblin Instigator. This might be a goblin deck, actually. Ooh, Vivian's Arcbow. That was a good job. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to Arcbow instead of Vivian, actually. Vivian just dies. She just dies right away. And with Arcbow, we can perhaps get like a Glow Spore Shaman or something like that. We want another black. But once we do actually have another black, then we can cast our Masker Girl and this guy's like toast. Hopefully we don't die until then. Which means maybe we should cast a Vivian actually to kind of soak up some damage. Yeah. Okay. That is not what we want. Enters tapped, Vivian. Let's see if you're worthy. Let's see if you're worthy. Close for shaman. Puppies wine less okay. than you. Okay, could be worse. Let's hope that we get another black mana source here. So she'll soak a bit, maybe. Maybe he just wants to attack us with everything. No, she's gonna soak a bit. But we definitely, definitely need um, a black mana source. Or, you know, we're going to have Ilarg out. Um, we're going to start getting pretty low here, though. Let's see what Not else he drops. If he drops, like, a Cranko or something, we're going to be like, uh, okay. Light up the stage. Sure. Ooh. Cavalcade of Calamity. What? All right. Now we definitely need a black mana. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, um, okay, so I think we just Vivian's Arcbow, honestly. And we might want to do it now, actually. Because if we wait for him to attack, then the Cavalcade comes out, and then we're just dead. Then we're just dead. So let's drop another Arcbow for the Arcbow. Come on, Massacre Girl. <laughs> Come on, Massacre Girl. Uh, Rekindling Phoenix. I don't think that's gonna do it. There he is. Uh, I got him. I got him. Okay. Um. So what? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay, we're just dead. <laughs> that's too bad. That's too bad. We didn't get our second black. But this is good. This feels good. It feels like we have the potential of winning against these kind of decks. I mean, the Cavalcade of Calamity deck is, like, obviously not a meta deck or anything like that. But I feel like this deck has the ability to do really well. We got off of our mana that time. But we do have ways of getting through to our mana, like our Rick's Maddie Revelers and our Glow Spore Shaman. So we have all of the tools. We just have to draw them correctly. And this is a mulligan, because we can't cast anything. So I'm just going to mulligan this. Okay, this is better. Uh, yeah, and we'll keep that too. Alright, so that goes in tapped. Next turn, we can cast a Arcbow, and the turn after that, we can cast the Vivian. Um, so, green. We might be up against Big Green Stompy. Actually, no. Gruel? Rhythm of the Wilds. Sure. Pass. My turn. Another Vivian's Arcbow. Okay. Pay two life. Viv. Minus two her. Tear it down. And Tear it store all it, down. I guess. Hopefully we can um, get another land here. If we get another land, what do we need? We need another black. 
Black. Black is the problem that we've been having. That's what we had last turn, and that's what we have this time. But I think we have more black than anything else, so... It's just a matter of the draw. It's just a matter of the draw. And I... Do we have... We only have three glow spore shamans. Okay. So he's probably going to want to riot into Viv. No, we gave him both plus one, plus one counters. Okay. Interesting. Ugh. Alright, that is not what we really wanted. There is one left in a blade of grass. Okay, this is not this is unfortunate. This is not what we want. This ain't what we want. But we'll Vivian's arc bow, dropping a Vivian's arc bow. In order to find a blocker. Ouch, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt big time. Mm-hmm. But if we get a Masker Girl out here at some point, which isn't going to happen for a while, obviously, because we, uh, we're very far away from casting one. We need land. There goes all our land. To the bottom of the deck! Ugh. Hey, there's a land. Um, is it going to matter? No, I don't think it's going to matter. We're just going to concede and go into the next one. That's okay. It's okay. We got screwed. We didn't get what we needed. Alright. Let's see if we can get our lands this time. Maybe we should be playing with more than 24 lands. I've seen some deck lists that play with like 26. And I wonder if that's kind of the way to go if you're not playing aggro. I mean, it's not like we get really high up there. Like, our highest up is a Ravager Worm. I mean, we only have one of them. So, I don't know. Honestly. Uh, yeah, I think we can keep this. We can't cast our Golgari Fine Broker until we get another Black Mana Source. Or our Illard, actually, for that matter. Ah, but there we are. Uh, no, let's Memorial to Unity. And then we can Vivian, the Champion of the Wilds, next turn. And the turn after that, sky's the limit, I guess. Oh, duress. There goes Viv. Gosh darn. Okay, that was a great draw. That was a great draw, my friend. Now we can Golgari Fine Broker, get our Viv back, and then Ilarg the Raise for the turn after that. So there are gates, it looks like. Alright, so what do we want? We want another black source here. So Golgari Fine Broker. So they have three gates. So we are gonna want to put a plus one plus one counter on it, I think. Get our Viv back. Let's see, how does this work? Whenever you can pick a creature card from your hand. So we, if you use Vivian, that's technically, those creature cards are not in your hand, technically. So he could Gates of Blaze, but it wouldn't do anything right just yet. So next turn, we'll Illarg. Giving it hasty haste. I think. I think that's what we want to do. But we're not going to actually put anything into play, because we don't have anything to play. So we'll just all attack. Two attackers. You may. We can decline this though, right? You may put a creature card. Decline. We don't want to kill him. If we put a raise boar in, it would kill him. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do this. So now if he doesn't have any if he doesn't have anything, then he's just dead next turn. <laughs> And we're getting above the guild's gates here. So he, he'll only have five guild gates. So he'll be able to kill our fine broker. But he won't be able to kill our raise boar. Yeah, there we go. Gates place. Oh, but he might be able to shock it. Okay. Uh, do we want to do that? Yeah, sure, take action. What the heck? Yeah, sure, what the heck. Vivian's arc bow. Okay, that was a pretty good draw. So... I think we'll just raise boar. Give it hasty haste. We unfortunately did not draw another creature card, but that's okay. Maybe next turn we'll draw a creature card and get in there for a ton. We might be able to Gates of Blaze kill it. But he might not be able to. If he doesn't have another Gates of Blaze, or like a creature that could block it, 
Jade Light Ranger. That's not gonna do it. Arboreal Grazer, Gatebreaker Ram. So he's still gonna take quite a bit of damage here. So let's, or maybe we should have Memorial to Unity. That's probably what we should have done actually. Oh well. Meant to be contained. Uh, we don't need Vigilance and Reach, I don't think. We're just gonna try and get some creature cards. Another Illarg. I mean, yeah. We knew that we were gonna be drawing that, so I, th I think I think the answer is yes. <laughs> I think the answer is yes, my friends. Mm-hmm. So he's gonna block. He's still gonna take three. Yeah. And then we'll arc bow. Uh, maybe he's gonna counter that? No, he's not. Okay, great. I don't think it matters. I'm pretty sure he's not gonna be feeling very good here. Shock, sure. So do we wanna do this? I mean, I don't think it, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, we have two at this point. Do we want to arc bow for five? Gatebreaker Ram. Um, yeah. Okay, we got to land. So we can get Illarg back. We can. We can Vivian's arc bow for five to get Illarg back. And I think that's what we're going to want to do. So we'll just leave Vivian out here, hanging out. Is that what we want to do? Yeah, that's what we want to do. We're going to have Vivian hang out. What we want is a creature card in our hand. We want Illarg out and destroying things with all of his piggy might. And then we want another creature card in our hand so that we can cast that creature card and bring it out and attack in for two creatures because if he doesn't have another blocker he could get another blocker this is very possible and if he does then what do we want we want something that can fly over like a rekindling phoenix would be great um let's see what else do we want ravager worm is our removal like we don't have a ton of removal in here actually um i didn't want to put in any chubacabras so if he attacks i don't think we're gonna block anything so you can attack for nine, sure. Ow. And if he has uh, another Gates Ablaze, I don't want him to be able to cast that this turn on any of our creatures. Um, so we'll drop a weird Rhythm in the Wild. We don't need two of those, I don't think. And we'll cast our other Illarg. Oh, okay. I don't think it matters, doesn't matter. Oh, you know what? We could have just won. <laughs> we could have just won with our Rakdos Fire Whirler, but no. No, of course I, I have to be like... I have to be like that. Okay, so we're going to do this. Sacrifice it to find a creature. Mask our girl. Ravager Worm. We're just going to Ravager Worm. Attack. One attack. You two. Uh, plus one, plus one counter. Yeah. And then fights you. Oh, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? We kill it. I should have said no. I thought for some reason that it just killed things. Maybe because that's just what I'm used to. Ravager Worm being able to do. Just killing things. We won anyway. Doesn't matter. All of my mistakes that I made. Doesn't matter. All right. So we'll play one more game. We'll play one more game. This is fun. I'm having a really good time with this particular deck. See, this is what I'm talking about. Jund, you just don't see enough of it. And it just feels so good to be like winning with it. Not like we've been challenged too much and against all of the decks that we have been challenged, we've lost against, but whatever. Don't steal my glory. Don't make me rain on my parade or whatever. Uh, 
I'm gonna be proud of my little... My little... Mess. My mess of a deck. Alright, so yeah. I think we can keep this, right? Can we keep this? If we... Rootbound Crag turn one, then Glow Spore Shaman turn two, then Kiora or Rhythm of the Wild turn three. Yeah, I think we can keep this. Let's keep it. Yeah, we'll, uh, what do we want to do turn three? Do we run Rhythm of the Wild or Kiora? I think we want to Kiora, uh, Rhythm of the Wild, sorry. Or maybe we want to Kiora, actually, so that we can draw a card when we drop our, fi our Rakdos Fire Wheeler. Lord Akira. Is that so? Lord Akira. Oh. Okay, Dragon Skull Summit. Um, so we want to drop our Swamp. And our Glow Spore Shaman. Okay. Do we want another land? I think we do need another green. I do think we, we need another green land. So I'm going to do that. So we need it to cast our Fine Brokers, our Rip Drop Raptors, of which we haven't drawn any yet. And Ravager Worms got eternal bonuses. Yeah. We need it. So, is it? It's probably gonna shoot. Oh, not gonna shoot our Glow Spore Shaman. But I think. I'm going to Rhythm of the Wilds. And I also think I'm going to attack. So, I don't think they're gonna block. And if this is a Dreadhorde Arcanist deck, then they probably have plenty of removal. So getting in for three is a luxury that we would not otherwise have. And then we can Rakdos Fire Wheeler. We're not going to be able to kill this, but... But I think that's okay. Uh, no, we're going to want a Kiora before we Rakdos Fire Wheeler, I think. Hopefully we get some live draws here. I don't want any more lands. No more lands, please. No more lands. Maybe we should have not brought this land back. But we did need that extra green, just in case we drew something that needed it. I think we made all of the right decisions. Ooh, okay, so this is a wizard's... This is wizard's deck. Cool. So let's enter tapped. Let's bring out our Kiora. Not to brag. And then I we'll Illarg. Kind of we'll Illarg. Rakdos Fire Wheeler, baby. Okay, this is good. If we can make this happen, this is good. And hopefully they're not just gonna like absolutely destroy our face here, which they, you know, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Okay, so he's, they're, she's just, they're just gonna kill our Kira. That's okay. I, I think that's acceptable. I think that's acceptable. So we have to attack, yeah. Yep. Then they can bring the shock back and shock her again. Me too okay. <laughs> so we will Illarg. <clears throat> Hasty. Hasty Illarg boy. Attack. And then we'll bring out our Rakdos Fire Wheeler with a plus one plus one counter. And deal to this guy. And attack. I mean, that's a lot right there. <clears throat> and then we can just Rakdos Fire Wheeler again. And if they can't kill us. Right? Which, I mean, this is Wizard's deck. So, if they get out that wizard, they can deal a lot of damage to us. What's that wizard called? I think she's... I think uh, Adelie's. Adelie's. They get on Adelie's, but they didn't, so I'm pretty sure we win here. Unless they can get rid of our Raze Boar. Uh, no, not even. They'd have to get rid of our Raze Boar and deal with our Rakdos Fire Wheeler. So two shocks isn't going to do it. Two shocks isn't going to do it. They need like two lava coils. Okay. We Dragonauts. See, they should have done this before they attacked, but they didn't. Ooh. That's wonderful. Hasty, hasty. 
And I guess we'll just deal damage too, because what the heck, why not? And yeah! Plus some, plus some counter. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, it feels great! Oh, it feels so good! <laughs> I feel like this deck has potential. It really does. Maybe I'll brew it a bit more and see if it will actually work on the ladder. I don't know. There's just, like, we got destroyed by, like, white weenies. We just didn't get destroyed by some, some like, weird stuff that people are playing. You know what I mean? I think if it was placed up against the best of the best, it would just get its face stomped in, unfortunately. But anyway, we had some, I had some fun games. I thought that was great. I had a great time. Um, and I hope you had a great time watching me. That was uh, our Jund Arcbow deck. So get out there until the next time we see each other. I wish you the best of luck. Get out there and play some like weird decks that just make you have fun. Like don't just always bang your head against the meta. Sometimes that's not fun. Just just build some fun, crazy stuff and just go for it. You know, that's what magic's all about. It's all about being an artist, being an artist and creating, brewing and having a great time, having fun with your creations. All right. So... I think that's enough rambling for me. Uh, I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.